Welcome to Certain Point of View, your first step into a much nerdier world. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast on iTunes. Just go to certainpov.com. And now, your hosts, Ben Milton and Addie Thomas. Hey, Nerf Herders, I'm Addie Thomas. And I'm Ben Milton. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Certain Point of View. Case is with us again this week. Hey, Nerf Herders. We Do we are- really have to say it anymore that he's with us? I feel like he's just with us. Like always. He's, yeah. always. He's always I'm present, always like a force. Yes. <laughs> Case is with you, and <laughs> you're with Case. Case and is with you, and you're with Case. And also Women. with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, anyway, we just got out of watching Rogue One Thursday night, opening night for Rogue One. This is our initial reactions. We may do another episode. We or almost episodes. definitely do more episodes yeah, a, about a, a this movie. process one, because there's so much context to, like, dissect and go over in this movie like yeah well let's start off case what was what sort of your initial reaction to this movie okay so i'm gonna lead off with saying i fucking called it like (laughs) everything about this movie i don't think i I think everything we talked about during the like our expectation expectation episode pretty much we, we hit exactly um i overall i'd say this is not a perfect movie but i liked it um i think uh, editing is probably the biggest enemy of this movie, but overall, I, I I came out of it. There were so many scenes I liked and enjoyed, and I was happy to see. Uh, and it is definitely the best prequel. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> that's, well, okay, <laughs> that la- that last slide almost feels like you're like now it lowers the standard. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. Honestly, that's kind of how I feel about the movie. Is that it's, it's not great. Really, I, didn't, I didn't, really, yeah. I didn't no, lo- I, I've been I didn't getting this vibe it. from you since. Yeah, the movie I ended, got that like, vibe from you too. I didn't love it. I oh, didn't love it. Okay. I liked it. I'm on the total opposite. Like, like this is right here the perfect arrangement for sort of the range of our feelings. Oh yeah, about okay, this movie. yeah. You know, because I really, I really dug it. But let me not go ahead. I want you to finish no, your I, reaction. No, I think. Um, it's hard for me. I, I think it relied a little bit hard on the member berries for me uh, in this movie of like, oh, remember Grandma Tarkin? Remember Princess Leia? Remember Stormtroop? Like there was just like too many callbacks to A New Hope for me. Um, not that that was... As a fanboy, it felt really fan servicey to me that where it didn't need to. In many cases, like I wanted a full standalone movie uh, with new characters and new expectations and new all, all new stuff. And so to have uh, Tarkin in, as, as a player in this game, you know, we knew Vader would be in uh, and he I thought he was used effectively and actually pretty well. Um, but there was just there were just too many callbacks in it for me where I just kept going, like, oh, right, this is just like playing into A New Hope. Just, and the final line of the movie is, no, it's A New Hope. Like, it's just, damn it, it didn't play bad for me. I didn't hate it. I wasn't like, oh, this is total bullshit. It wasn't prequel bad, but it wasn't like, fuck, this is something we've never seen in Star Wars before either. It just... I don't know. You didn't if, think this was something we've never seen as well, in Star it was, Wars before? Well, I, I just, I, it, it wasn't, it wasn't. No, not really for mm. me. Okay. All right, I well. Didn't, I didn't, I, there was no scenes where I was like, holy shit, I, like, this is really incredible for me. Addy, give, give your thoughts because I think we've got a lot more to talk about. And before we get into, like, the back and forth, yeah. go, why don't you go? I, I dug it. I really enjoyed this movie. This is what I expected of this movie. It delivered. I, I expected a lot of fan service, and and I was fine with that. Like this is a movie that you know. Again, I you know we knew this was going to be basically one shot apart from A New Hope. So I expect like it would be weird, honestly, to not have some of these characters show up. To not have Grand Moff Tarkin on the Death Star would be a little weird. You know, to to not have him there. In fact, I was actually expecting to see Admiral Taggy and like some of the other guys that were part of that, like the the, the Council of Admirals at the beginning of uh, of A New Hope. 
when they mentioned that the 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 Senate has been disbanded, I was expecting to see some more of those guys, to be honest, because I was expecting to see some of the the competition between the the admirals and and Krennic and just sort of their their positioning over each other and sort of Vader um, and and how he functions in relation to to that council. That's why I guess like I know I know you get we we talked about it in in the parking lot for a little while that you you know yeah. you weren't crazy about this scene at Vader's castle. I was the moment I saw the first shot of the lava planet, which is not Mustafar. <laughs> it's not Mustafar. <laughs> you know what? But they didn't actually say. They said every other planet. They were like, "Here we are. Here we yeah, are." Yeah, they did. And then they do it. Vader's castle, and I'm like, Mustafar. And it's not Mustafar, <laughs> but it might be. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but but the moment the moment I saw that planet, I was like, "Holy shit!" I'm about to see Vader's castle. Like they had, they like the the Ralph McQuarrie art has been out for like since '83 for Vader's castle. It's always been something talked about. Yeah, but either, never either done. that or the Witch King of Agmar. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, a little Minus Morgul action there. Yeah. <laughs> Which I, I love Minus Morgul. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh like I, I totally dug the castle. I liked seeing a little bit more of that the the dynamic uh on the Empire, but also on the Rebel Alliance. I like the idea of a Rebel Alliance that got its hands dirty with the way it had to operate. Yeah, like, and an I, alliance that could fall apart. Like I did like seeing dissension in the ranks of like the leaders of the alliance, right? Like With Saw kind of, Guerrera as yeah. a much more militant offshoot that they were ashamed of because of what he's willing to do, like the way he's not trusting of you know even a guy who's defecting. You know, like I liked that. It's a trap. <laughs> yeah, the, the it's a trap was a little like ah, uh, you yeah. didn't need the it's a, a trap line. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, that, that was yeah. what I was talking about. Like there was just too yeah. many of those there little were, moments yeah. where you're like, uh, okay. But there yeah. were other ones that were good, and like I I feel like the movie. It, it does a lot of them, and, yeah. le- and and some of them are are strong choices. Some of them are weak choices. Like I, we were talking uh, about, like you didn't really need Doctor Evazan, <laughs> like it, it, it like yeah, yeah, it yeah, down, yeah, yeah. You know? Like what the fuck was he doing there? <laughs> like, like I mean, like, like it, oh whatever, he's on another yeah. planet. Well, whatever. Hold, hold on. Okay, so let's establish real real quick. There's a lot of shout outs. Like that's yeah. there's no question about that detail. We're not surprised at that detail. Yeah, but there's a lot. It, it's clear this is a, a movie made by a guy who loves. A New Hope, and and that's and, been and Star Wars movies in general, and yeah, like but I, I think there's especially a New Hope. So there there are strengths and weaknesses, and I think we we have some more to get into. Let's talk real quick about like the the not fan servicey part of the movie, like yeah. the actual and, and, like but story. See, that's story the part that I, the, I do really enjoy because I do honestly like the cast of characters. I like the crew that they assemble. I, I do. I, I I thought Cash and Andor was, was an interesting character. Jyn Erso wasn't that fascinating, but she was the she, backbone she, she of the She was story. a player character. Like, like I was saying this in yeah. the car on the way over. It felt very much like a, uh, a setup for a KOTOR game yeah. where it's like, all right, so we you 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 make your character, and now we, you meet your first character who's kind of like a Han Solo type guy, mm-hmm. and then you're wandering through a crowd, and then someone calls out to Ooh, you, and you have you like have conversation. You have a kind of crystal yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> it, there, there were a lot of elements that felt very much like um, like D and D plot style, yes. which considering this is a one off movie, I, that kind of made sense to me. Like you only get these characters for so long; they're in a very well established world, so it's not like we can really we. It's not like we really need them to be um, audience viewpoint characters for like detailing the environment. Um, so there, there's a lot of that, and that's a strength and a weakness, I think, for the movie. Uh, yeah, for the weakness in that for me is that I didn't care about any of these characters. Not when even each, one. When every single one of them died in their each individual moments, I wasn't, like, upset. Well, part of that is because the only one who had a vicious, violent death is K2SO, which is what we exactly call right. it. Like, yeah. Yeah, this is a Disney movie, by the way. So, like, there's... The robot's going to get the most vicious Yeah, the, the robot gets the real violence. There's a few red shirts that die, like, on screen. But most, yeah. of the, like, most of the main characters die off screen. And that was a little bothersome. I was really happy, though, that they all died. Like, yeah. that's... Yeah, that was satisfying. One. Yeah, this this movie does right. some things that a Star Wars movie hasn't done before. For uh, It has... Everyone die. Yeah. Um, and there were stakes to the sacrifice. I thought yeah. 
they, yeah. they have a mission that they, they accomplish, but that mission isn't them seeing a happy tomorrow. That mission is just setting the stage for other people to carry the torch. So th that was nice. We had a Death Star that was floating around being a dangerous thing. That was nice. We yeah. had stealth missions, which they've never successfully done in a Star Wars movie. Uh, and like, I'd love, I love seeing the scale of the Empire from the ground, the scale of the destruction of the Death Star from the ground. Mm -hmm. I thought were impressive things to do, like seeing, seeing you know, the, the, you know, the collapse of you know like of Jedi, Jedi just, yeah, yeah of Jedi yeah, yeah you sweet. know and and you know you didn't see as much of it on Scarif but you saw a little bit of it all right can we talk about the the complete unnecessary use of the Death Star on Scarif like you have two star destroyers falling from the sky through the portal that has just now been destroyed <laughs> down onto they, your well, onto aside, your I, base. I, I, I think they you're had forgetting to, about they had to super part. kill the bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he'd been shot, but we weren't allowed to see him get shot and die that way. And Grand so Moff Tarkin like, may wanted to make sure he yeah. was dead. <laughs> so, so instead, we're going to shoot a super laser at the ground, but instead of it hits the ground but it also but on the way down the, takes the tower, the tower that the guy was on it. yes that he's the only one there like yeah. it's just there so we can have a long shot so kill of him. <laughs> completely unnecessary so yeah. completely unnecessary i, I mean it, <laughs> that plan planet is destroyed with or without the without the death star yeah your plan was some continuity there because well, like the they, death star well, being a functional also... like destructive force is a little weird with the context of the of a new hope so, which is why they kept on being like, not full power. Oh, not full power. Like each time they're like, fire up only one reactor, not all the reactors. Like, right. Um, well, but, Tarkin did say like when destroying, when firing the laser, it's like, well, like he's trying to stop them from transmitting the, the plans. Yeah. But, so you're just going to wait for the Star Destroyer to slowly descend? I mean, is it, was, was he like pin? He's a, so the idea was he was just he was just blowing, he pinpoint the, 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 the <laughs> tower, no, that, which is funny. But that's exactly what they were. That's that's exactly what they said. To a certain in, degree, uh, from a certain point of view, yeah. I, uh, that's I exactly know. what yes, they said the, in the from movie the point that of view they were of doing. The Death Star, like yeah. let's take out. That. Uh, yeah, I, I know. How do you yes. shoot? Uh, I know you you are right. Yes, it is very ham fisted. It's very like clearly well, done that way. Like, but that is exactly what they did. This movie is not subtle. Yeah. Like no. they, they do some stealth stories. They do a few things um less less broadly, less bluntly than like a George Lucas script would, but it's not a subtle movie. It's still playing in the Star Wars universe. Right. Like, no <laughs> no mission is like uh, like this fast wordplay that like at the end of it, it's like, I, I figured out what they mean because they actually said this and they would have said this. No, it, you know, it, it's still, still like, a David Mamet play. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's a good movie. Yeah. It, it's a good movie. It's a good serviceable movie. And I think like upon further viewings, I will grow to like it even more. I don't hate this movie by any stretch of the imagination. I know it's coming off a little bit. Like I'm kind of grumpy about it. It's yeah, very much so, yeah. <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't, well, what the do you movie. what do you like about the movie? <sighs> <laughs> well, it doesn't sound like you enjoyed this movie all that much. Um, you sound like a lot of the people who complain about Force Awakens. If you know circles I, within circles, <laughs> I, I, I see. Sean, I see Sean's point. I think you spent a lot ever. of time with Sean before this movie. <laughs> I don't think this is a good thing. <laughs> I spent, I see Sean's point now about The Force Awakens clearer than ever. Let's just mm -hmm. say that. I I, th I thought the cast was great. I thought mm -hmm. the plot was great. I thought the effects were amazing. I thought uh, the music was fantastic. Yeah. Um, different. And I yeah, like that. Different and yet familiar. Yeah. When it a couple needed to be. A couple themes when it was mm -hmm. necessary. Um. Yeah, I, I mean, there's a lot. There's a yeah. lot about this movie that I really yeah. like. I think it's really good. I thought on the effects, like when when you're, you're talking about Tarkin, yeah, or Princess Tarkin. Leia. Leia. Okay, we haven't talked about this one yet. It yeah, the, 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 the effects Beowulf, are the thing. The yeah. Beowulfing of those two characters. Very yeah. like wasn't it's it's great. high end video game quality cinematic look for for those guys, but it, it just CG for humans isn't is yet. not there yet, and they. It was an odd choice to do that. Like, yeah, like they picked an actor for Mon Mothma, so why wouldn't you pick an actor? Like, yes, again, well, Peter Cushing owns that role. Right, and what, what I also said, though, was like Peter Cushing barely looks real when you see him <laughs> really. Like, right. He has the most right. pronounced, like, artificial-looking yeah. cheekbones. Like, to have 
any detail that's off, like to have it not be an actual person, your brain can no longer take it. Like it's just yeah. dumb. Like you're like, I would have rather like they, they introduce it in a good way where it's like in a reflection and yeah. that I thought was a nice yeah. touch. And we I would have like, rather oh, spent okay. more time not seeing his face directly. I said, I really wish that the, those ships were more poorly lit so that we weren't getting like full like bright shots of his face and then later right. Leia's face. Leia's I don't I, I don't think is as bad but no. it's also it's so brief. It's yeah. so brief and it, it, it she doesn't really talk that much but it it's still not good and like it, it's it's rough. Like, yeah. like that's the thing. Um but she's not as egregious. Like but Peter Cushing or like creating like a, a ghost Peter Cushing just it it looks oh god it, it's it didn't match. Like, no, it was really obvious. It yeah, was and really he was, obvious. and he's a major player in yeah. this movie. And he's yeah. in so. scenes with lots of other people. Like, yeah. it's not interacting with other people, and it's so clear he is not a person. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, if it was just him by himself in the shot, and like maybe with computers or talking to Vader or something like that. Yeah. Those would that would have been a different scenario, or on hologram. Right. You know, like right. there's all these ways you like in the Star Wars universe that you could have not the person be there, but still there for the scene. Yeah. Yeah. Like almost every every scene with him could have been him communicating from a different spot. Yeah. Um, like from the Death Star to a Star Destroyer. Like or from the executor or something like yeah, that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right. Right. Yeah, that that was not my favorite. Not yeah. my favorite. Yeah, and that and that that was a rough that was rough to watch for me. I, I did have a hard time watching CG Tarkin, yeah, and 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 as for as brief as Leia was, it was it just looked wrong. I mean, I, <laughs> you know? I also I accept it because at that yeah. point we'd seen a so, lot of so it, much, much already. Of it. Um, yeah, I mean, but, you were but like, okay. I didn't have a problem with so much with uh, you. You mentioned Red Leader, you know, was, was in there. Like it was so brief. Like that was so brief. I that, didn't, I, I didn't that was well done. Like, that was yeah. actually well done. Yeah, I was disappointed we didn't get any Porkins because, like, seriously, I was surprised we didn't have Porkins on. I was I kept no looking wedge at, or Bigs. Or Bigs. I kept looking for Bigs. I was like, well, Bigs, I guess we're gonna see Bigs. Bigs makes sense because time timeline line, wise, he might not actually be there yet. They did yeah. mention Wedge. Uh, Did they? They, I, they said Antilles at one point. Yeah. Oh, well, wow. I thought they were they were talking about Captain Antilles for the tar, uh, for the Tantive. Mm. That's that's who they were talking oh, about okay. there. So there was also over the intercom a General Sindula. Yes, so a nice Rebel movie, yeah. shout out. Mm-hmm. So I guess that means well, that's two Rebels because yeah. you had there uh, were lots of references yeah. to all Star Wars, it's not just a New Hope. Yes. And yes. actually, so one of the weird things this movie made me think, uh, it made me think more fondly on some of the choices of the prequels. Like we had like Jimmy Smith shows up playing yeah. uh, playing Bail Organa, and I, I was like, I like that choice. I li- I like seeing him. I like having him have like a little weight now, a few years removed from from the prequels. There were there were elements of this movie that brought those movies into this content, this larger tapestry. Like it helped stitch together yeah. the different movies a little bit better. Like it created like a continuity to it uh, and some stakes because characters from the prequels previously the a lot of them we hadn't seen before or they're re- playing different or played by different actors un- under wildly different circumstances where we knew what happened to them. It was nice to see some of these people having small parts earlier, like in the timeline earlier, bigger parts now. And then we ultimately know their fates like, right. like Mon Mothma, like she, you know, was a recurring small character in the prequels. Now she's a big part here. And then we then see a very good casting, similar person, in Return of the Jedi, and that's that creates a trajectory that we weren't really getting otherwise. Right. Yeah, they they it's there's some interesting choices in this movie. Um ultimately I think it, it works really well. Ultimately. Um I, you know, I think your mm-hmm. initial your your initial reaction case I think is right of like it's not a perfect movie. I think editing is a problem. Yeah. Yeah, there's the, some pacing issues, the especially opening early. 40 minutes of the movie, I think, is rough. Uh, after, like, so the movie opens with, like, a cold opening, uh, and then it jumps forward in time. Uh, after that jump forward in time, it cuts around way too much. Like, it could easily keep it together, but I think they want to, like, start setting up actors at different, or not actors, but setting up characters at different locations and, like, establishing who some of these characters are. And I think we could have really started with just one person and stayed with them for a while, which would have been more of a a traditional Star Wars kind of editing style. Mm -hmm. But, and I get they want to, like, here's our ensemble and we don't want any one person to be the protagonist. But Jin is the protagonist and we could have been with her for a while. It was Jin and Cashin. I thought Cashin was... Cashin's stuff was cool. And, like, but, but they're also cutting over to... 
Uh, Saw Gerrera the, and Saw, well, yeah, Saw Gerrera, but also the uh, Imperial. Sorry, I gotta look. At the uh, Saw Gerrera is really tied. Really tied to, really tied on, to or no, uh, uh, Bodhi. Bo- Bodhi, okay, yeah. that's right. But Re- uh, I mean, Saw Gerrera is really tied to Jin. Like, yeah, the only reason he's in that story is because of Jin. Right, but he was right. fine for the purposes. Yeah, I, I yeah, I, I thought he was fine. He, what he did a really good job of was being that archetype that uh, Lucas clearly really liked conceptually. Uh, this idea of like a person who's had their humanity stripped away from them. Mm-hmm. Uh, like he very much is like the opposite of Vader. Like he has the same kind of breathing stuff with the same kind of breath elements. Like he's yeah. got his legs gone. He's like mostly machine at this point. That was actually really nice. Like yeah. there's like symmetry. It's poetry. It rhymes. <laughs> uh, no, don't say it. <laughs> uh, no, but it was, these were nice touches and that's a, a much more effective element of that than say like doing Anakin losing his arm the same way Luke loses his hand. Like, uh, in the movie sense, not yeah. in the Return of the Jedi. He looks yeah. at his hand. Right. But, uh, yeah. Like the the rapid cutting, I think, was kind of rough. I did not love the way they used Vader in this movie as a whole. Um, but I did love the ending with Vader. Oh, yeah. that scene was uh, amazing. Well, you, was, you, you get two you're, scenes with Vader. Yeah. So, so he, yeah. He, well, uh, I think you, you get two big scenes with Vader and then like he gets a few snippets. Sprinkles. Uh, yeah. Towards the end. So the first scene with Vader opens with us seeing his, his castle. And we see him like in this like in the back, uh, to, back tank. to tank, and I loved that. I thought that was great. I was like, oh, this is what he's doing. He's like plugged in, and he's be, like being fed information, but he doesn't need to be in a suit out and about. And it's like that's what he's doing when he's not meditating or when he's not in the suit. And trying and to heal. His that body. actually resolves an issue that like fandom has had with Vader. Like it's like, does he smell just like stinky feet inside like a can? <laughs> of, like, yeah. Like is he is smells he, like bacon, I assume. Yeah, like is he the <laughs> wrapped in leather <laughs> at the time. <laughs> bacon wrapped uh, in leather. <laughs> like that that was sort of like a nice detail for it. But then the scene with him right after that I didn't really love. And sure, you got James Earl Jones still doing the voice and it still is like, okay, that's cool. I'm not talking about the punny nature of it or or any of that. Just like the scene I didn't think accomplished anything that we right. needed to see. Yeah. And the movie is fairly tight aside from scenes like that, where I would have rather them show him arrive, show him about to talk to Vader, even have the door and like you start to hear the breath and then cut away. Cause that conversation does nothing for the plot. Like it does, it, it he kind of comes back emboldened, but not really yeah. in a big way. Doesn't help him. Uh, yeah, as it, mu- and then later yeah. we get a few snippets of him, like on the ships, which we didn't need to see. And then they have the such a good introduction of him, where like he's like boarding the ship and his lightsaber turns on from the shadow. Yeah, yeah. and we see him. Yeah, and that would have been the best yeah. reveal of Vader in like well, actual you, person. And you have like you know because Tarkin's like, oh no no, we'll just send Vader. Don't because we could have yeah. heard and, him. And you could have had him just say, oh don't worry, I have it. I have Vader's it handled. Yeah. Way. We or you don't even say. Vader. Vader, so that way you uh, could save so the reveal shock. for well, the yeah. That, I mean, even if you, if you wanted to have him there for like setting up Vader's purposes uh, at other spots, you could have had him talking over intercom. You could have had a little bit of hologram, but not a full shot of him. Yeah. But like then, like an, a reveal of him in person should have been so there. You guys didn't like this movie either. So. No, 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 no. I like the movie, but <laughs> hey, just, we're just taking another I'm pass. We're taking another pass <laughs> <on> already. Already. <laughs> like I said, pacing I think was the big issue with this movie. There's yeah. a, there's a few choices of scenes I that I didn't that. think were necessary. I can agree on pacing, and I I do agree the castle scene is a director's cut type scene. Yeah, it felt it felt like the Java scene from A New Hope. Yeah, uh, versus the later scene was like so perfect. Like that's exactly that, that's, what I've wanted the thing. for there's, Vader. There's so many good, like almost perfect scenes in this movie. Not I'm not saying the, again the movie is not almost perfect, but like there's like these like little snippets there that it's like okay so like you're in the woods and all the all of a sudden a giant four legged walker like shows up out of nowhere and that's terrifying or like the ATST in like the city that they were mm-hmm. in like like or like guerrilla fighting like there's all these like great things that we yeah. just don't get in Star Wars movies right. normally we haven't we we've talked about them or, or we've had books about it or we've had comic books or, or video or games. games we've never had a good movie that's done some of these scenes and that this movie does. And that's so good. Like that's, that's what I love about it. You know, it's the fact that it's not perfect. It, it can be forgiven because it, it does, it does things that the prequels like it couldn't do because the prequels were like not showing us things that were truly new to star Wars. They were trying just to like flesh out, but using the same language. Uh, whereas this is like trying to show here's the alphabet that we haven't used. Right. Here are other characters that live in this universe. Here's all those words with X's and Z's. So I had an interesting conversation with Jenny on the way home as I was dropping her off before coming to record this. And, 
you know, she, I was asking her, like, well, what did you think of the movie? And she was like, I really liked it. I thought it was great. Like, as someone who's not a Star Wars fan, yeah. and I really appreciated having Tarkin in there and having him look like the character. I appreciated having Princess Leia in there. She's like, all those callbacks, like, really helped me in reference. She was just like, because I didn't go in really knowing a lot about the movie, and I'm not a huge Star Wars fan, so I'm not, I wasn't really sure, like, when everything was taking place. I right. wasn't really sure where, because she's like, I knew the last Star Wars movie was happening after Return of the Jedi. I didn't know, I, I thought this was kind of in the same vein, but I was like, no, because of the Death Star. That doesn't make sense. Right. <laughs> like, so it was really helpful for her as a non Uber fan to have the, a lot of those references in there to kind of help place her in that world. And I wonder how much of us being, you know, on a, you know, we're. We're, we're holding, you know, this under a microscope, this movie under a microscope. Dude, we do a Star Wars themed podcast. Yeah, like, you know, of course we're holding yes, it under but, a But at the same time, does our enjoyment of the, will the, the enjoyment of these movies be consistently framed by our expectations of the references to a Star Wars movie? Is that something we're over, like, are, are we over criticizing it? Yes. <laughs> well, so like Addie and I rode back from the movie and we, we were talking about um, framing this in the context of all the other Star Wars movies. And I feel it's impossible not to talk about the prequels and impossible not to talk about the later movies with this movie in particular. But the the sort of analogy that we kind of were going with was like, it's like if you watched a movie that was like a historical drama, like yeah. it, there's there's context just by virtue of the fact that, you know, the outcome um, so if we were talking like about a movie about like World War II, like knowing how D D how D Day plays out right. is important. The same way we know what happens to the Death Star and what it is. Right. Um, like I compared it to Gettysburg. Like, right. Yeah. I know Pickett's charge is doomed, but there's still a drama in watching those characters participate in this this sort of doomed event. And do you? St- do you feel attached enough to these characters in the process is really the question. Yeah. And I feel like that's the effective part about this movie. Like it, it does embrace the fact that you're supposed to know the context and it, it reminds you of what, what the timeline is and how close it is to the things that you should know about. Like you should know about the first star Wars movie, at least peripherally um, to really em- embrace the, the, context of this movie and to like have the stakes matter right um like would this movie work if (laughs) if this was the first star wars movie no i don't think so like it it really wouldn't um even getting beyond all the references being laden in there which would be so weird uh (laughs) if a movie just came out with all that um but it's but because it has those stakes and it it sets up we know what happens to alderaan so we know when someone says they're going to alderaan what that means now and we know when people are referenced we know what that like what those things and the weight of those things uh and so setting up like here like if we were doing a world war ii movie you'd want to have references to things that are related to that point in history to help frame like oh right this thing's happening at the same time as this thing and that thing is happening at this time so we wouldn't be upset about references to history being all over there so some of that is necessary just for context yeah yeah Uh, and i i guess you know like from a non-uber fans point of view like that was really super helpful like to her it really worked really well for like i think she enjoyed the film more than i did Honestly. Like some are too deep a cut and some are too like fan servicey, but others were fun. Like uh, there was, there was a point where like the stormtroopers like reference and uh, I'll have to rewatch it to be certain about this detail, but I'm like 99% certain they make reference to a ship being discontinued. And then like, good, that's a piece of junk. And they're definitely talking in my head, at least about the millennium Falcons like model. Like, <laughs> Cause they use the exact words. Like it's a piece it's of junk. It's a piece of junk. Yeah. 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 I, I need to see it again. I yeah. need to see it again. And I need to see it in a theater that's not so damn hot. Cause that one was that pretty, one was rough. Yeah. That was that was not conducive to movie watching. <laughs> yeah. My back started hurting a little bit in that seat too. Yeah, yeah we, was, we were all playing around with our chairs. Like, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, I was like, yeah. can't get comfortable. It's yeah. so hot. I'm sweating. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it wasn't wasn't a great theater experience, but yeah. um I'm excited to see it again with with an open mind. You Are know? you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just messing with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just messing with you. No, I, I am excited to see it again. Um, I think I'll probably like it better the second time. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I look forward to like going over it with a, a like a, a finer tooth comb because there's definitely a lot more in there that we didn't pick up on. Yeah, yeah. like the ones it's that stick dense. out to us. Some of them seem like so like referency because they're like the ones that are like so really obvious. coarse it, and obvious. It's, it's funny know. though because uh, because Ben, you have the same look you did. When you walked out of Dark Knight Rises. Oh shit, that's not a good sign. I know. That's why I'm really worried about your I'm really opinion trying on this movie. To like this one because you ended up coming to my side about Dark Knight Rises. Too. I know, yeah. I know, but I and really... you came out of that one too of like I really like this movie. Yeah, but I the... really, it was really good. I really <laughs> I did. liked what they did with this movie. I did. Well, like Sean was saying in the parking lot after the movie, like he came out of watching Phantom Menace, being really excited, and I did too. Like yeah. we all were we all, really yeah, excited when we watched yeah. those movies. Is this going to be like that? It's hard to say. Like, this is a record of us feeling good about it generally uh, after watching it that night. Yeah. And maybe we. I still feel good about Force Awakens. Let me just put that out there. I thought Force Awakens was a better Second second viewing for each of those prequels is where it really started to show. Like, I remember being excited about Yoda bouncing all over the place in Attack of the Clones, but then the second viewing, I was like, wait a minute, this is pretty dumb. Yeah, I don't think there, there's anything quite as egregious. I think there might be a few things with, uh, like, dog fights or stuff where we're like, oh, that was not necessary. Like, I, I felt, actually, th- this is a, a... I felt that the dog fight over the planet at the end was a little um, awkward in the, the context of the larger oh, yeah. victories of the, rebe- of the Rebellion. Yeah. Because I felt like Return of the Jedi, which is, like, the first, like, full-on, like, fleet versus fleet fight was supposed to be like a unique fight, like where they like finally actually like were forced to not run from the Star Destroyers or Death Star before. Like, well, like yeah. they're like forced to fight and they actually do fight and they win. Whereas this, they actually fight and they win. And it's like, oh, that's that's cool. But it's kind like, of. <laughs> it, it, well, yeah, but it feels like a it feels like an actually an evenly matched fight, yeah. which really I felt made the rebellion almost too strong. Yeah, um, I, I guess a lot of it was a surprise and it was pretty it felt pretty desperate. Like those X-Wings were being taken down really quick. Yeah, were they? Were yeah. they? But not so quick. Not like, so quick. I mean, there were still a lot of them flying around. The ones on the surface weren't taken out as quick. The ones up up above, uh, I thought were taken out pretty quick. I, I just don't think it came uh, off as desperate as it could have, and the fact yeah. that it was such a full scale fight as That's opposed true. to a hit and run, yeah, um, felt different than what. Like I thought the Jedi, like that fight was supposed to be like a unique fight, and this felt very yeah. similar. Well, you know, and that's a, the problem. I you know, it's it. an interesting thing for me. One of the things I remember also walking out of Force Awakens, I miss not having that big scale dog fight in Force Awakens. Like you had, you you had the attack on Starkiller Base, but it was kind of X Wings attacking a structure and making a couple bombing runs. There was, there, there weren't that many, like there were yeah. tie, a couple tie fighters here and but there, not real. but the big space dog fight, see that. And that was a thing that I was really looking forward to. So for me, just getting to have that, I guess was just like, it looked amazing. Yeah. yeah I love amazing. It. Yeah. It was, it was very well shot. And, and you know, the, the couple of X wings crashing into the shield as it closed. I thought like that, like that was fun. I, it felt desperate enough for me. So wait, and we had a, like a real, ground forest fight you know yeah, what they involved, should have done involved teddy bears like, doing, i wanted more bestand the, the the space monkey guy yeah we yeah. definitely want more but you know what they should have done is as they were closing the force field yeah is porkins should have been the one going in there and he should have pulled, he pulled up, up and he should have pulled up he should have <laughs> he should have he should have been redeemed in that moment <laughs> He pulled yeah. up many times before, just not just that. that one time. Against <laughs> the I, mean, Death Star. I mean, we'll see how we feel. Like you guys are warmer to Force Awakens than I am. Yeah. Um, but I, like, I liked Force Awakens. I feel I like this one more. Is, yeah, at least I my do too. Current reaction. Uh, we'll we'll see. Like this, like I said, this is a a record of how we're feeling. A few hours after watching it, and maybe in a few weeks, maybe in a few years, we'll have completely done a one eighty. But. That's yeah. where we are right now. Did you feel like, did you guys feel like this was a decent war movie? It was okay. I mean, yeah. it wasn't like Platoon or Thin Red Line. Well, okay. Platoon and Thin like Red Line. That's a, that's a different. It wasn't even Saving Private Ryan. Like, you wouldn't put this. <laughs> it wasn't even. I mean, okay. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> you, you have to put this in a very like, different, where, where you, you have to put this what, in a different era of war movies. You want to put this in like uh, think, Kelly's Heroes? Like, what no, you, like you got to put this no, up I, against I, like John Wayne World War II movies. You got to put this like I Bridge on the River Kwai as, as opposed to like more in a different, like this is not like 70s war movies where you know everything is suddenly become you know a whole lot more you know complex morally 
as far as uh, when, when you're coming like Thin Red. Yeah, there's a there's a very big shift Wait, in war this movies. Is, uh, so this is definitely sanitized versus what a lot of war movies can do. Yeah, like like we said, the robot it has to be family. was shot up and that was pretty vicious. Yeah, most other people die. Like a lot of people die in explosions where you're like, oh, like they fade to white and we never see their bodies. Like we don't. Right. See, like I said, there's a few red shirts, but like for the most part, it's stormtroopers and it's robots that like we see the actual outcome of. Like and then some people might get shot, but they have time to say parting words and they're not truly dead until like something else hits them. This, it, like, this reminded me a lot of like John Wayne Sands of Iwo Jima. That's what this felt like to me when I, when I watched it as like, if I watch it as a war movie in that era of, you know, like world war two, like this is a noble war. This is a noble cause. And it's, and there's a desperate nature to it for the squad. And you have like, like I, I like, uh, Chirrut and Way's death. I, I thought that was cool, you know? And I liked, you know, Bay's going a little bit nuts after it. You know, I, I, I know yeah. you guys didn't have, you know, yeah, my, my the connection my, to the characters. Yeah, my problem uh, was I, 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 I was dug both of them, actually. <laughs> like my problem said, was I didn't it's, connect It's our to first him. gay couple. <laughs> 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 I, I, I am convinced. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, and I'm totally okay with that. I, I just didn't care about any of these characters. Yeah. And and they're you know so when they died I was just like meh all right oh, but then they have yeah. to re-roll as Han and Leia <laughs> <laughs> right like I, I mean I think that might be the the thing where we knew that this was a one-off story and it's it, the context well no the context no that's honest. not that's not it the, it's not that I know that there's a bigger story it's that they didn't really give me a reason to care about any of these people other than other than Jin what do you know about any of these people. That's true. No, I mean, like, uh, what I sorry. When I say it's a one-off story for an ensemble this size, and to try to spend as much time setting up the characters that well, they could they could have done a better job. They, they could have they done more trimmed into it. other areas and yeah. given some extra scenes to make us care about these characters more. Yeah, yeah. You, talk, you, talk, you talk about like you know Sansa Uejima or Kelly's Heroes or any of those kind of yeah. older World War II movies. Yeah, or even you know moving into the modern era right. of. Um, uh, saving Private Ryan. I cared about that squad. I knew who those people were in that squad. I knew more about them. And I cared. like when they died, I felt something. Yeah. When these people yeah. died, I it, didn't really feel anything. Right. I didn't feel anything. I was like, meh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it, again, you, Jen was the, our player character. Yeah. Everyone else was like, yeah, everybody was someone NPC. else's role. Like, yeah, you might care about your paladin before he dies. And that, but, yeah. but, that, that, that that like, but that's true does. in all of those. But see, that's, like, that, that's the interesting thing. Like for me, w like when I talked about reading other people's reviews, it felt like certain people gravitated to other characters more than others. And other people gravitated to different characters. For me, Cashin was interesting. K2SO, I think everyone seemed to like, and cheered him way. Where everybody the, was likable. Yeah. yeah. Everybody well, was but, likable, but, like, but we didn't know anything about yeah. that. It could have been deeper, but yeah. we also spent a lot of time with what's his face, the villain, uh, Krennic. Yeah, Krennic. Oh, Evil Knievel. Yeah, yeah. Who, <laughs> we spent a, we spent a lot of time with him. Actually, we did he, spend a lot of time. Uh, with him. Considering that he was actually one hundred percent not necessary to the plot in terms yeah. of like the actual story, because yeah. it could have just been Tarkin. It could have been anyone else. Yeah. Like, he, we spent a ton of time with him and he was fairly developed. Not, we don't know anything about his backstory, but we yeah, know a lot which, about his personality. Uh, right. You know, th that, that's an interesting thing, especially with the expanded universe. Cause there is a novel that Galen Urso's story and Krennic's story are a major part of it. And there's apparently a lot of like fighting, like uh, positioning and, you know, with uh, like just fighting for position between Tarkin and, Krennic and Tarkin is sort of part of a noble, noble family and Krennic is sort of a self-made man. So there's a, there's a diff very interesting dynamic between the two. So again, that doesn't come across in this movie yeah. and that's, and, and that, that is a problem. I will give you that. I hope so. they didn't pull back on characterization in order to allow them to be developed in, in expanded, a, expanded universe. Yeah. That, Which, that I do. I am concerned. Yeah. That, that is the danger of that's this type okay. of storytelling. Yeah. Yeah. That said, Considering that it, I felt the movie was fairly brisk, I mean, I, what, I'm not sure what the running time was, but it, it felt it didn't it didn't feel long. It, it, not it at didn't all. feel long. I I was I'm surprised when to they give were it the benefit Scarif, of the doubt. How fast I, they got to scare? Yeah, like honest. sure, we don't know as much about any of them as we did about Han in the first movie by itself, you know. But I think it it still was a good romp. Like I enjoyed all the characters. They were all sacrificial yeah. lambs that we knew were going to die, um, or at least hoped would. But I think I think it was fine. I think yeah. Um, you don't think there's anything to 
sort of Jin Erso's dynamic as being the so- the the daughter of uh, Galen Erso and the whole reputation as an imperial scientist. You don't I, think there's any significance to that? Uh, I mean, there's significance. I, think I actually didn't like that part. And I, I, don't think I think they, they didn't need that, that story detail. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, I thought they either should have just dropped that idea altogether or developed it. Yeah, yeah, but they didn't want her to be like the main character. Like, they, I mean, she is the main character, but they didn't want her to be like so overwhelmingly the main character that nobody cares. What right, and that I, I that is actually a problem I had with it. It wasn't a big problem. I thought it was, I thought it was fine. It was very much like a, a movie script idea. Yeah, uh, which again, it was it was fine. I don't begrudge it because it is a movie. But it, it felt like, here's my idea for how, at the end, she knows which one is the right plan. Like, right. so we can set up that detail. And it does explain them bouncing around a little bit more than just, like, going straight to the plans. Uh, again, it, it was fine. Like, that, yeah. I wasn't mad about it. Yeah. I, there's nothing in this movie that angers me, but there's just nothing that also, like, made me go, this is the greatest Star Wars movie I've ever seen. Well, I, I feel like you could pull back a few shots, like I said, like... Put put some of the, like the rapid cuts between locations together a little a little bit better. Maybe pu- remove a few scenes in there, and I feel like you'd have the best Star Wars like movie after the original trilogy. Right. Oh, for sure, for sure. I think that pretty much. Wraps I think it's already it up. in the running. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I think that that pretty much wraps this up. Just a quick reminder for everybody who's listening. We have a Patreon uh, account set up. You can head to our website at certainpov.com, find out all the information there, click on support if you would like to find out more about our Patreon campaign or our donation page if you'd like to buy some stuff. And we're going to have continue to add to that in a little bit. We're going to be uh, increasing... All, all, we got t-shirts coming, hats coming, all sorts of cool stuff coming this, this year. So keep your eyes out on that. Uh, thank you so much for, for coming over, Case, and, and playing with us tonight. Yeah, it's always fun. And until next week, stay scruffy, my nerve herders. Thanks for listening to Certain Point of View. Don't miss an episode. Just subscribe, rate, and review the podcast on iTunes. Head over to certainpov.com. 